Cavs caught by it. Brad Doherty. Big roundhouse jam, two of his 20 points. And early in the fourth, check out the tight D by Cleveland. Brandon tipping away Isaiah's jumper. Larry Nance gets it out ahead. Gerald Wilkins off to Brandon, who goes in for the finger roll. Nice play. And the Cavs are changing things in a hurry. Late in the fourth, the Cavs cruising off the Pistons miss. Jerome Lane ahead to Wilkins, who has really turned it on offensively for the Cavs. The 360 show for the crowd. 109-89, Cavaliers, your final numbers. The Cavs outscore Detroit 34-15 in the final period. Wilkins, 22 points. As you see, Doherty had 20. Cleveland has won their last five at home. Detroit, losers of eight of their last 10 games. Meanwhile, Charlotte Zoo. Forget is in the books for Don Nelson and the Warriors. He got an early reprieve with an ejection as Golden State lost for the fifth straight time and ninth straight on the road. A 138-111 humiliation at Washington. They went 0-4 on their current road swing. To add injury to insult, top scorer Chris Mullen left the game for the Warriors with an aggravated thumb injury. Speaking of thumbs, rookie Alonzo Mourning ignored his fractured one to block eight shots, pull down a dozen boards, and toss in 14 points as Charlotte beat Milwaukee 118-111. Larry Johnson was high scorer in the game with 30 for the Hornets as the Bucks fell for the 11th time in 15 tries. At Boston Garden, the Celtics played with Larry Bird's retired number 33 in the Raptors for the first time, and they responded in the way Larry loved the most with the victory. His old teammate Robert Parrish played in his 1,304th career game, second all time, scoring 18 points in Boston's 105-93 win over Philadelphia. On the NBA scoreboard, Cleveland down Detroit. Patrick Ewing returned to the Knicks lineup at Miami, Minnesota. Pistons at Cleveland turned into a clear-cut case tonight of home cooking prevailing over the tough task of winning on the road in the NBA. The bottom line, though, was this. The Cavaliers just had too much talent for the visiting Pistons to handle. Let's go to suburban Cleveland for a look. Richfield Coliseum. Isaiah Thomas penetrates, draws the D, dumps off to Orlando. Woolridge slam. Detroit looking good early. Second quarter, Woolridge sneaks up on Terrell Brandon from behind. Oh, picks his pocket. Goes in for the layup. What a heads-up play for Ron Rothstein's club. But the Pistons were down by five at the break. Third quarter, Woolridge highlight film continues. Oh, yeah, the trailer there. Then on Pistons transition, Isaiah to Orlando for the double pump job, part of a 10-0 binge, and the Pistons were within one. But that's when the Cavs caught fire in the third. Brad Doherty got things going. And then we look at that. Uh, the takeaway there tips it ahead, starts the break, and Gerald Wilkins off to Brandon, who goes in for the finger roll. And that was enough as the Cavs put it in cruise control from there. Cavaliers win it. Gerald Wilkins scores 22. Cleveland's won five straight, nine of ten. The Pistons have lost eight straight on the road. Paul? The Knicks went to Miami. They got pumps. We got pumps. Cavs wheelchair basketball. Sponsored by Metro Help. Getting people back in the game. And the Cavs bury the Pistons by 20. Cavs started quickly going up by 10. Larry Nance, the great pass to Brad Doherty for quick two. The Gerald Wilkins show in full swing tonight. Jump shot city for Gerald. He nailed the Pistons with 22. But Detroit wouldn't go away easily. Terry Mills, who plays like a man possessed against the Cavs, nearly doubled his per-game average with 24. Detroit pulled ahead late in the third quarter. So Doherty went to work with this monster slam from Terrell Brandon. In spite of a sore knee, Brad dunked in 20. And speaking of dunks, Wilkins finishes the evening with an around-the-world 360-degree number. Gerald, rate that dunk for us. When I rate that an 8, and I, some people give it a 10, but I'm going to be a little hard on it. But, uh, <laughs> the guys they got on me, they said I should have passed the ball. I was too far ahead, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, one thing that was disappointing tonight, Mark Price, of all things, missed a free throw, snapping his Coliseum streak at 100 straight. The Indians' winner... Already 
got this game lost in the closing seconds, but here comes Gerald Wilkins. Before it's done, 360 for the Jam. How about that? Gerald Wilkins, just like the Cavalier team, which has kind of put a 360 on the way the season started for them, doing well now. Wilkins gets the dunk and the play of the day. We'll be back with the updates of the day in just a moment. The triple, and then Dumars again, and after one, that 10-point lead was down to one. Mark fell out of bounds, so Joe picked it up and nailed it. Now, second quarter, Terrell finds a cutting Danny Ferry. Cavs are coming back a bit. Gerald Wilkins going to stop and pop on a real nice turnaround right here, top of the key. And then Terrell dishes to Brad, who cans the baseline jumper. The blue and orange back on top by five at the half. But then in the third, Brad misses. Gerald Wilkins controls and hits, and it's the Cavs by 10 again. But then Terry Mills hit three in a row. Elo playing tough D. Mills scored anyway, and then Mills hit the J. Pistons led it by one at this point. Then Bradley Lee with the grand slam. Cavs by one after three. Brad with 20 on the night, and the fourth quarter was all good guys. Nance to Ferry. Danny, 10 on the night. Terrell had nine assists, including this one to Nance Larry. 19 points, 11 boards, six assists, and four block shots. Play of the night, Gerald Wilkins with the 360. He had 22 to lead the Cavs. How sweet was that? Cavs outscore Detroit 34-15 in the fourth. The win it going away. Cavs play at Atlanta tomorrow night. The first of three straight on the road. Now let's head to Miami for the Heat and the Knicks. And the hot hand belonged to one Glenn Rice, who throws down the three here. And then Glenn's going to do it again. But then he seemed to get a little tired because this one's only two. Rice had 24 on the night. Knicks come up with a steal. Rolando Blackman will finish, and the Knicks won it. 108-105, Ewing was back with 26, and now the scores where the Jacks won. Follows it almost and does bring down the entire backboard. That's one we haven't seen. O'Neal's onslaught meant they needed 35 minutes to bring in another backboard so they could get back to business, but then the Suns will go at the shape with CNN Headline Sports. Orlando had been simply magical on their recent Western road swing going 3-0, but today everything came crashing down. I mean everything. Shaquille O'Neal brings down the basket at American West Arena. They had to wheel a new one in. The game delayed over 35 minutes. But when it started back up, it was all Suns. Richard Dumas poured in 31. Sir Charles added 28 in the 121-105 Phoenix win. Magic still an impressive road swing going 3-1. The Warriors' woes continue. Golden State drops their sixth straight, 87-82 to the Celtics at the Garden. Kevin Gamble tossed in 20. Nelly's club playing without Chris Mullen, out with a torn ligament in his thumb. Other scores, New Jersey downs Milwaukee, drives in Petrovic 27. The Bulls and Blazers in a rematch of last year's finals. Seattle's at Detroit. The Knicks host the Heat tonight. College Hoops, Jimmy King is not always the first one of the super soft you mentioned on the Wolverines, but it was King's day today. A career-high 24 for him in Michigan's 84-76 win over Purdue. The Wolverines trail only Indiana in the Big Ten. Glenn Robinson led all scores with 31. In the Metro, UNC Charlotte hands Tulane their first conference loss of the year, 68-64 in overtime. Jarvis Lang comes up big for the 49ers. The tip-in with less than a second to go sends it to OT. Then Lang closed it out with the breakaway slam. Got up and snuffed it out, and we'll be back to take a look after this. They play at the big play. Put your tires at the regular price and get the fourth free. Four for three now. Curry saving. By Curry. Kids. Now Dave launches it right out there. Demian's behind everybody. He's got it. It's a 10-5. Touchdown Bears. I don't believe it. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guest or traveling salesman. So back to reality time for Cal. After the third biggest comeback in history last week, Washington has ruined Cal's only other 5-0 start in 50 years in 91, and they beat the Bears 12 straight. The Huskies have suspended top, season, uh, top receiver Jason Shelley for the rest of the year. Jim Lambright cited a series of off-the-field troubles. Shelley, a sophomore, is expected to transfer. Washington players will tell you that uh, Bill Walsh isn't the only offensive wizard in the Bay Area. Ex-Husky coordinator Keith Gilbertson's Bear offense 
has scored 40 plus four straight games. As Mike Tirico reports, after their most shocking escape, not involving an opposing trombone player, these Bears believe anything is possible. If the Bears can come back from this, it will be the all-timer. When you're down 30 to nothing, you think, what are you going to do in your next job? Or, you know, what's, what's, the, what's your next career move? Or what's the theory of probability? N is 1 in N choose K, where N choose K equals... <laughs> like a big puzzle and it was just piece by piece all of it was coming together and it all was spelling win the comeback equation fueled by an offense averaging over 43 points and 470 yards per game it's win or lose on this play wants to throw goes for the fade caldwell he caught it he caught it is he inbound they're deciding is he inbound yes he is does 93's 30-point comeback subtract from the lore of the play in 82? Well, you can never erase the play because, you know, it's against Stanford, the big game, but uh, this kind of, like, equals up to it. It's been 11 years since Cal fans have seen something as improbable as the play. Now can they beat Washington, something that's been out of the equation for 17 years? We want to prove to people that we're back to where we were um, in, the, in, the, in that we can play with the, the best teams and, and that's what the great challenge is Washington one of the best teams in the country they say the comeback is going to give them confidence as for Washington the off the field distraction the Shelley suspension any impact yeah I think it's really a, a negative for Cal because now that <laughs> Shelley's gone they can still throw the football but it'll place a little more emphasis and burden on Napoleon Coffin the outstanding talented runner in my opinion one of the most explosive guys in the country they'll pound the football last week Oregon had 290 yards on the ground against Cal Coffin may have 290 today by himself remember one thing Craig about this ball game Washington is three and one their only loss their only road game but I think they're strong enough to go to California and beat them with the special teams by seven points and one tragic note in this game artist Houston a defensive bank for Cal learned this week that his brother Cornell was killed in Somalia serving for the US mm. Army our condolences, deepest condolences to his family. Before we go on game day. Are winning. And to this point, the Buckeyes do have a great team. Off to a 4-0 start and posting their highest national ranking of the John Cooper era. In Columbus, these indeed are the good times. But John Cooper's most difficult hurdle is painted orange and blue. And even when it seemed to have been cleared, it's bounced back up to drop the Buckeyes. And with it, Coach Cooper's frustrations continued. Two fumbles deep in Illinois territory in 92 led to Illini scores. And the long run of wins over Ohio State stretched to five. There may have been some fortunate moments, but don't credit all those wins to Lady Luck. We were talking about a, a team that we had beaten uh, once in the last four years. Uh, by luck, that might be uh, something to give some credit to. Uh, but we've won, and we've won five years in a row. The bottom line is they have found a way to win the football game. We, we are 0-5. I tell our players and our coaches that if, if you don't like that, and certainly we don't like it, then the only thing we can do is go win the football game. I, I don't think that we would stop them from being uh, a bowl team or stop them from being a big team contender with the loss this year. Uh, but it would certainly be, be a blow to, uh, to what they see as their, as their destiny. Uh, Washington 23 to 17 highlights and analysis of all these games coming up on the residents in college football scoreboard show all about seven minutes from now Linda the big one in the Big East went to Boston <laughs> Coming up, it's Seminole Heart and Mind. Exercise the Miami Hex. And could the Spartans be Wheatley Shockers? Plus a Madcap Mountaineer Cardinal Classic. Possible payback in the Pac-10. And we will get carried away. The residents in College Football Scoreboard next. Danny Werfel and the Gators get ready for LSU. That at the bottom of the hour. In the meantime, though, welcome to the residents in Scoreboard Show. Welcome to the Residence and College Football Scoreboard Show. I'm Chris Fowler, along with the coach, Lee Corso, 
the Pony Craig James. This turned out to be Payback Saturday, a lot of excellent games all around the country, the first of which in Tallahassee, the game that is really the first pivotal battle in the national championship race, Miami and Florida State. The uh, Seminoles, so many scars over the years at the hands of the Hurricanes, but uh, Payback was in the minds of the Noel fans on this day. First possession for Florida State, first series, Sean Jackson. Runs right, breaks free, he's gone. Matt Fryer downfield, a great block right there on Paul White to safety. Seven zip Seminoles. But remember, they jumped out quickly last year. And Miami would come back again. First quarter, third and goal on the six here. And Frank Costa, one of his few highlights. To Donnell Bennett, who gets free of the linebacker. It's seven, seven Hurricanes back in it. Later in the first quarter, on a third and 10 play from their own 28, Charlie Ward in trouble, gets away, rolls out, and Matt Fryer gets behind the linebacker, Rohan Marley. He's not going to chase him down. 14-7, Knowles. Fryer goes over. Why not hug the trooper? You're up a touchdown. Then, second quarter, second and goal, Ward. That shotgun offense, so effective, he rolls out, just gets into the end zone. 21-7, Florida State at the half. Fourth quarter, it's 28-10. And Devin Bush steps in, picks off Costa. The defense has now scored four touchdowns, allowed three this year. 28-10 is the final. They're calling it part one of the national championship. You don't get any rings for part one. That road goes through South Bend and Gainesville. Some key plays today, guys. Uh, no doubt about that. There was still an outside chance when you looked at the ball game. Third and goal on the five. Plenty of time. Down 21-7. Miami receivers up top left. Run the pick. Costa should have awaited, allowed the receivers to get into the end zone. Instead, he throws the ball down in the field of play, and it cost him a chance. Instead, it goes to 21-10 and really hurt the momentum. All right, my key play, Florida State defense, scores 21-10, Florida State leading. Number 11, Devon Bush, is in a designed free safety pick. The reason why you can tell that, he took a jump on Costa's eye key, and that play finished Miami. And the 31-game unbeaten streak in the regular season is 